All right, we're back with Coach Fraser. We'll kick it off with his initial reaction to the game tonight and go to questions. Yeah, it was a weird game, uh, pretty hectic. Uh, we never really settled down into a good rhythm. Um, but in spite of that, we the effort was fantastic. Uh, it just wasn't that sharp and clean on the night. Um, you know, it's really, it's hard enough to go on the road and win games in this league. Uh, as I said, we didn't play particularly well, but we did. When you do enough to earn a point, only to have it taken away from you, that's a, that's a really tough one to swallow. I mean, <clears throat> anybody who looked at the non-penalty call, uh, who thinks it wasn't a penalty, feel free to contact me, but I'm, I'm not really sure what was going on there. All right, we'll go to questions. Start with Matt Pollard, last word on soccer. Hi, Robin, thanks for the time. Um, double substitution, what, seven, eight minutes into the second half. Uh, what were you seeing that you didn't like about what was happening in the first couple of minutes of the second half, and what was the goal of the substitution and the change? Thank you. Lawless has been... He came out of the game last week with a hamstring. Uh, it started to tighten up on him again. So <clears throat> we were having trouble. As I said, we weren't playing particularly well. Uh, so the thought was to go back to five. It just creates different angles in terms of building out. And um, that was it. We just wanted to, we knew we had to change Lalas. Uh, we had to preserve him. We have a ton of games coming up soon. So we had to preserve Lalas and uh, probably the best way to change the course of the game, we thought, was to, to go into a back five and play as we've played so much in the last year or so. And uh, you know, I think we we were a bit better. Uh, we were able to create some attacks and go side to side and create some decent opportunities. Go to Brendan Sloan, Denver Post. Hey, Robin, thanks so much for the time. Um, you know, with giving up that, that goal tonight, um, it, it seemed like San Jose kind of um, really just got after it um, from, from the get-go to the start of that second half. Um, but like, what was the message? What, what did you maybe try and do to possibly tweak things at, at halftime um, or um, anything like that? Yeah, we just talked about our positioning in, in build-out and... <clears throat> talked about some ways to perhaps gain some more possession. Uh, <clears throat> and as I said, it was always kind of a messy game. Um, I don't think anything was really clean on either side for a while. And uh, certainly set pieces are something that we're very, very good at and disappointed to give up a goal in the set piece. But <clears throat> as we made the changes and change of shape in the, in the second half or right after the goal, it felt like we got more of the game and a little bit more established and we were able to create some chances. Go to Brian Jennings, Burgundy Wave. Hey, appreciate it, Robin. Um, the first sure. half, it, something I noticed, and I don't know, tell me, if it, tell me if this is not correct too, but it seemed like the guys were, like you said, it was a messy, frantic game overall, but the guys were, were almost talking a lot more and, and I maybe gesturing and, and moving people around. Was that more a matter of um, kind of getting some miscommunication or was it more a matter of adjusting on the fly to, you know, the craziness San Jose was bringing? So thank you. Yeah, I, I actually think San Jose started the game uh, quite well. And I wouldn't say, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say it was craziness. I would say they were, they were pretty good and pretty mobile in the midfield. And that created a bit of issues for us. And uh, I don't think defensively we were frantic. I felt like with the ball, we were frantic. Defensively, uh, they do a good job of stretching you out and trying to gain spaces uh, between you. And it just took us a while to figure out how we wanted to get pressure, where we wanted to get pressure. And uh, in that process, we made a few mistakes and opened ourselves up a bit. But um, credit to them, they, they made it difficult for us in the first half. And uh, I thought our guys hung in there. And um, as I said, in the second half, we were able to create some things. Welcome back to Matt. Robin, no good Diego tonight with the suspension. Your thoughts on what Jossie was able to do and just um, overall maybe 
what the attack had going for itself and what it didn't have going with Diego's absence? Um, I thought Jesse was uh, really good for us again. Uh, his work rate and his intelligence are, are things that certainly enhance our team. Um, missing Diego, Diego's been really solid all year. And whether he's in a higher position or more in a midfield position, he's been involved in a lot of goals for us <clears throat> and a lot of goal chances. So obviously he's missed in that respect. Um, but as I said, I thought in spite of the game not being really smooth and not being really clean, that the guys just, they fought. And that's the thing that I always appreciate about this team. Go back to Brendan. Hey, Robin. Um, right when Mikey came on, it seemed like, like much like last week, he provided such a spark offensively. Um, what did you see from him tonight? And also maybe what, um, what, what did he provide that Max um, maybe just wasn't able to in, in his hour or so on the pitch? Thanks. Yeah, Mikey came on in a different position than Max was playing. And his running behind was, was effective and dangerous, and he was able to get himself into some, uh, some pretty interesting spots for us and created a few chances and a few half chances. Um, you know, so to compare him to Max is apples to oranges because they played different positions. I know he came on for him, but at that point, <clears throat> they ended up playing in different positions. But Mikey's his energy and his, his ability to run at guys was, was good for us in terms of creating some opportunities. We'll go to Sydney Cohen, ColoradoRapids.com. Hi, Robin. Um, so mm -hmm. just about what you touched on earlier with the resiliency of this group, which you've always um, kind of been outspoken about, this is going to be a very busy month for the team. Um, just what are your thoughts on, on heading into this Open Cup match with Minnesota on Wednesday and kind of just the team's ability to, to bounce back from this result? Well, that's one thing about this team that I've always lauded is the community. And this is a game where they know they didn't play well, but they also feel really, really hard done by the non-call on the supposed non-handball. So they're not going to lay around and lick their wounds for too long. They feel hard done. They feel like they've been cheated. And... Uh, hopefully this will propel them forward to come out Wednesday with a ton of anger and uh, just get on with the next thing because this was this was not well received. <laughs> 